Hello. I'm Doug Jones with Michelin North America. Michelin is committed to safety when servicing tubeless radio truck tires. So we've partnered with the Tire Industry Association to bring you this very important message. We're confident that if you follow the safety procedures outlined in this video, you can reduce the risk of an accident and protect yourself from a serious or fatal injury. A tubeless radial truck tire inflated to 100 PSI contains enough explosive force to launch a 16-pound bowling ball almost three-quarters of a mile or 13 football fields. Since the risks to dealer and fleet personnel who service these assemblies are potentially fatal, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration created regulations for employees that handle truck tires and wheels in any way. OSHA Regulation 29 CFR 1910.177 contains the proper procedures for demounting and mounting tubeless truck tires on single-piece rims and includes specific requirements for the equipment used to inflate tubeless radial truck tires. OSHA regulations also require safety glasses and other forms of personal protective equipment, such as safety shoes or boots. Before attempting to demount a tubeless tire, remove the valve core to completely deflate the tire. Once the tire appears to be deflated, run a wire down the valve stem to make sure it is not plugged. Using a slide impact tool, unseat both beads on the tire. With the beads unseated, Lubricate both bead surfaces with an approved rubber lubricant and avoid petroleum-based products. In order to demount a tire on a single-piece rim, you must determine the short side of the drop center. On steel 22.5 and 24.5-inch disc wheels, the short side of the drop is opposite the disc. A rubber mat should be used to protect the mounting surface on all disc wheels. On 22.5 and 24.5 inch aluminum wheels, the tire can be demounted and mounted from either side. But tires on 19.5 inch disc wheels must be demounted and mounted from the disc side. With the beads thoroughly lubricated, position the tubeless tire irons on either side of the valve stem approximately six inches apart with the stops facing in. Lift the tire irons to pry the bead over the rim flange, making sure the opposite bead is fully in the drop center. Remove one of the bars and position it just below the spot where the bead contacts the rim flange. Push the curved end of the bar between the rim and bead, making sure the tip is completely below the bead toe. If the tire iron is not properly positioned, it can damage the bead. The end of the bar can tear the bead sole under the force of prying the bead over the flange. This type of damage can be prevented by making sure the tip is completely below the bead toe. With the tire iron properly positioned, pry the bead over the rim flange. You may need to remove the other bar and repeat the process several times to completely remove the top bead. Lift the assembly and position the flat end of the tire iron between the rim flange and the back bead. Make sure the tab is past the rim flange to prevent the bar from slipping out. Allow the assembly to fall to the ground while pulling up on the tire iron to remove the bottom bead. Before mounting any tire, Make sure all of the components are thoroughly inspected. It's also a good practice to install a new valve stem when mounting a new tire or retread. Perhaps the most important step when mounting a tubeless tire is to lubricate the rim surface and the beads with an approved rubber lubricant. Make sure you cover the entire bead surface from the toe to just below the molded ribs on the sidewall. 
Position the tire opposite the valve stem and push down to begin the mounting process. Place the curved end of the tire iron with the stop facing down between the bottom bead and the rim. Start with one foot inside the wheel and step outside the assembly while prying the bead over the rim flange. Once the bottom bead is mounted, reposition the tire so the sidewall opposite the valve stem is closest to the drop center. Next, stand on the sidewall opposite the valve stem with your feet approximately shoulder width apart. Place the curved end of the tire iron with the stop facing down between the top bead and the rim. Lift the bar to pry the top bead over the rim flange. Make sure you don't move the foot opposite the bar when you mount the top bead. Before removing and repositioning the tire iron, move the foot closest to the bar. Continue the process to mount the top bead. After the tire has been properly mounted, the beads must be seated. In order to make sure the beads are evenly seated on the rim, the best practice is to seat the beads with the assembly in a horizontal position. When the beads are seated with the tire in a vertical position, the weight of the rim can result in beads that are not centered on the rim. As you can see, the distance between the rim flange and the molded rib on the lower sidewall is different around the tire. This results in lateral runout which can cause a vibration or irregular tread wear. If you look at this tire from a cutaway perspective, the heel of the bead is curled under, which causes the bead toe to lift. Real life examples can be prevented by a combination of clean rim surfaces, proper bead lubricants, and horizontal bead seating. When properly seating the beads, a tire stand should be used to suspend the rim so the sidewalls are not touching the ground. Once the assembly is in the horizontal position, the valve core should be removed. If the valve core has already been removed, run a wire down the valve stem to make sure it is not blocked. 